Hey everyone, um, it's Miss Eladari and I'm back to do a graphing activity with you guys. So we will be graphing coins, so money. You can graph anything really. You can do Fruit Loops, candy, uh, anything that has different color, beads. So today we're just going to do money. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out one of each of the coins so we can review them. Here is a penny. It equals one cent. It's the only copper brown coin. Next we have the nickel. It's a thick coin. It doesn't have any of the grooves on the sides. And it equals five cents. Next is the dime. It's the smallest coin, and it equals 10 cents. And then the quarter, the biggest silver coin. That equals 25 cents. <clears throat> so when we graph, we're going to go ahead and first draw our graph so we can sort our coins. So you're going to make kind of like a giant L shape. And then let me grab my one of each coin so I can remember what I'm graphing. I'm going to put it in order of the least amount to the greatest amount. Here's also what a nickel looks like. There's two different ways for a nickel, by the way. So these two are the same coin, same amount. It's just they've changed what a nickel looks like over the years. So penny, nickel, dime, quarter. And I'm going to write those down. Penny, P, E, N, N, Y, nickel. N I C K E L Dime D I M and magic E makes that I say its name and a quarter. The qu is Q U A R T E. Okay, now I'm just going to dump out my coins and sort them. Sometimes quarters have different states on the back of them. But as long as you know that this is the face on the quarter, then you're good to go. Just double check that. And the quarter is the biggest coin, so normally it's easier. The nickel, another nickel. Two pennies. And then they've changed the backs of pennies over the years, too. Um, I think these all might be the same. Oh, here they go. But a penny is very easy to identify because they're copper. They're the only copper coin. Okay, the dime. Nickel, penny, dime, nickel. And then I have <clears throat> a penny and a nickel. 
Okay, so I have sorted all my coins. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my numbers right here along the sides. And I'm going to put a dot of however many coins I have next to the numbers as it goes up. So, put zero as a placeholder down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just go up to ten for now. Okay, so next to the number, you're just going to take off the coins and put a dot. So... For my pennies, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pennies. <laughs> now the nickel. Move that away. I don't put any right here. This is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The dime. One, two, three, four and the quarter one two three four five six seven so the purpose of graphing is to compare and contrast more or less of how many you have of a certain item and so we did coins, and so we're looking at uh, how many of each coin have the most of, how many have the least of, how many I have equal to. And so if you look at our graph, first thing we need to do is we need to put a title. So obviously we're graphing money or coins. <clears throat> so I'm going to title my graph coin graph. And then the th is the pH digraph. pH. So coin digraph, that's our title. Our labels, penny, nickel, dime, quarter, and our number labels on the side. So looking at our graph, which coin did I have the least of? The dime, because that's the smallest amount. How many did I have for the dime? Four. Now, which coin did I have the most of? The penny. This one is the, the longest line. And how many did I have? I had eight pennies. Now, look at nickel and quarter. The nickel is seven and the quarter is seven. What can we say about those amounts? That they are equal. So, I had seven nickels and seven quarters, so those are equal. So graphing is really cool. You get to look at um, all kinds of different objects and sort them, and then you get to compare and contrast them. Uh, thank you so much, guys. All right, bye for now.